Happy New Year to you. Oh, wait, wrong song. All right. Hey, look, you guys love the podcast. Am I right? You've listened to all 14 so far, and now you're on number 15 for the new year. That's right. We're back from the holiday hiatus. Now, I know you want to support the podcast. Donations are totally appreciated, but why not get something for it? Guess what, guys? We got the Mark Roman Empire gift cards. They're now available. MarkRomanEmpire.com. Click swag. $10, $25, $50, $100. Or, hey, pick your denomination. Why do I need to dictate to you how much you want to give me? I'm not that guy. Now, you can use these gift cards towards any Mark Roman Empire, also a podcast, swag, like the poem, Son of Elmer Gantry's Bitch, autographed the Lieutenant Frank citation that's so famous now. We're about to hit almost uh, citation number 10,000. Can you believe that? Uh, Lieutenant Frank photo also autographed. And we got some new swag coming this year, guys. A lot of cool stuff down the road, up the pike. John Updike, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, you can also use these gift cards towards any Mark Roman or Vegas 90210 character performance booking fees. These make great gifts. Valentine's Day is around the corner. Hey, do you know someone who has a birthday? This, These are great ways you can support the podcast while still, you know, listening to my podcast. You know, get some gift cards. Go to the swag page. We're going to be updating that here real soon with the new online store. It's got the link to right now. Get those gift cards. MarkRomanEmpire.com. Click swag. You're nobody till somebody loves you. Spread the news like mayonnaise on toast. The policy of truth. Gary? I have a mission for you. He's spanning down, loading up and truck him. Hooks capacitor. Da, hook it, okay. But let me tell you about that time I drove a cab. Money that's something, chicks that read. I want my Mark TV. Um, first, you're not on TV. Uh, pond cast. Now, <laughs> that is some weird and wild stuff. Did you know that, Ed? Yes! Oh, please don't drop me home Because it's not my home, it's their home And I'm welcome no more Ah, well, Robin attended Juilliard I attended Hillsdale I'm a graduate of the San Francisco Comedy College I've traveled the Midwest quite extensively I lived through the big short and had a pretty good time doing that I've seen Pat Robertson jabber about 167 times And it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it Not to mention the fact you're talking to a subversive so what do you think? Do you think I'm qualified? Oh, well, I think we'll need to pray about that and ask your father. Shut up, Marilyn! Just eat it. Just eat it. The Mark Roman Empire. Also, a podcast. It's showtime! Take a little walk to the edge of town and go across... The tracks where the viaduct looms like a bird of doom as it shifts and cracks. He's a god, he's a man, he's a ghost, he's a guru. On a gathering storm comes a tall, handsome man in a dusty black coat with a red right hand. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? I could eat the instrumentals. Oh my God. Don't you love Peaky Blinders? Yeah, I did that over the holiday hiatus too. And that was my Marky Oki of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, in case you wondered who created uh, that glorious tune known as Red Right Hand that opens uh, Peaky Blinders, although they have a lot of cool covers too. Yeah, that's right, kids. I'm back. Back from the holiday hiatus. Hey, Anne Marie Evans is on the show today. She's a good buddy of mine. She's an artist doing a lot of really cool things in town. We'll get into that here in a minute. Oh, hey, hi there. I'm Mark Roman. Mark who? Mark Roman. You know, like the Empire. 
I'm back. We'll get to Anne Marie here in a minute, but uh, speaking of back, we're back at the world famous Musicians Institute right here in Hollywood on Hollywood Boulevard, carefully nestled between a Tom Cruise Scientology hostel and another luxury residential tower. Affordable studios start at just forty nine hundred a month. Why doesn't everyone have like five? We are safely within stumbling distance of the legendary Pig and Whistle restaurant and pub, as well as Jameson's Irish pub, as opposed to, you know, like a Japanese pub, where everyone knows Lieutenant Frank's name. Ollie, proper Ollie, as ever is on sound. Ollie, I told you we'd be back, right? Here we are. You're welcome. About the holiday hiatus. Did the podcast die? No, it just went on pause. Not menopause, just pause, okay? I can do that. So apologies are due, all right? I apologize. I'm sorry um, for that tweet. Oh, wait, wrong meeting. Sorry. No, I mean, I'm sorry to all you listeners who are expecting a fresh new weekly episode over the last couple months. Um, I also apologize to all my guests who I had booked uh, throughout, especially December, who uh, I needed to reschedule. Sorry about that. Um, why? Why did I take a break? I needed a break, all right? Look, I gave you guys 14 high-quality podcasts, all right? Blood, sweat, tears, Money I don't have to make this sound awesome. Okay, you're welcome. I just needed to catch my breath, all right? And apparently, I'm hearing the YouTube millennials uh, are also finding the wisdom and taking a break from their 24-7 Sherman show, whatever the fuck they're doing. Uh, so, okay, all right, can I, can I do that, you know? Uh, I did live stream on YouTube, though. Um, I did that one. After the date, a Mark Stroll. Go check it out. And thank you to the 25 of you who already have. Really appreciate that. All 25 of you. Loving these numbers. Awesome numbers. What else did I do? What, and why did I, ha I go on hiatus? Well, I did need to earn some income. Okay, guys. I had to catch up financially from subsidizing the podcast. Uh, I also, there's a, a lot on the calendar as far as opportunities uh, as a working artist to earn. Uh, about a few of those, let me share. Uh, I did do Bad Santa. The expectation I'd be doing that a lot. Uh, after one night, um, <laughs> how do I want to put this? There's a lot of kinds of different gigs you work in this town. And this one I worked with some guys I've worked with in the past. Um, and it is what it is. It's, 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 it is what it is. We'll just leave it at that. I just, uh, after the first night, there was a lot of, uh, extra production going on that I never was, uh, I never knew about. Uh, I was suddenly presented with, uh, a multi-page release and the SAG after a, a union member and me started scratching my head and going, yeah, I don't know about this whole thing. So bad sand I did for one night. Uh, it was an interesting night. I think I, I gave all the bad Santa I have to give. Uh, I'd love to do Beetlejuice again. I'd love to do. Uh, Ron Burgundy again, maybe Buddy the Elf. That's a lot of energy, but uh, Bad Santa. I'm pretty happy with uh, the one, the one off. That was good. So there's a bunch of other stuff I got I had to do as well. I mean, uh, that's a busy time uh, if you're a busker in Hollywood during the holidays. Uh, we had Captain America working really hard with the holiday tourists in Hollywood. And then my Lieutenant Frank, we had a lot of uh, NFL wrapping up its season, regular season with tailgates, the Rams and the Chargers. And of course, we had the Rose Bowl, uh, which there's a lot of games that happen at the Rose Bowl. But when you say Rose Bowl to uh, people outside of L.A., they usually think of New Year's Day with the parade, the floats and all that. I think one of those floats caught, caught fire. Is that 
Was that right? I think they did. If only I had a, a sidekick on this show to kind of ask and find out. Yeah. I don't know. Should I have a sidekick? Yeah. I don't know. Do you, do you sometimes hear voices? Yeah. Sometimes I hear, and I know I listen to a lot of podcasts and I have these earbuds of different types in my ears all day long. So did, did you, I feel like I hear voices. Do you, do you hear voices? So, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll think about that, the, the sidekick thing. We'll think about that. Anyway, what else did I do? I, hey, I, uh, I got to MC as Mark Roman uh, at the Viper Room on the Sunset Strip. That was pretty cool. Uh, that was for New Year's Eve. Uh, my good friend, Freddie Morales, uh, listened to him on episode eight. He has a Depeche Mode uh, cover band called Devotional. A lot of people had known him from his previous band, Strange Love, where he'd been for many years. But uh, uh, Devotional is his band that he put together uh, just this year. And I think they really kind of debuted at the Depeche Mode convention. I think I mentioned on a previous podcast uh, at Avalon in Hollywood back in November. But uh, he asked me to MC uh, at the Viper Room, which uh, I didn't do a lot. I think I was on stage briefly once and then behind a curtain a second time. So it's more of like a voiceover. But uh, it was kind of cool. It was pretty awesome to, uh, I can now say that I've, I've worked a gig at the Viper Room. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And then, I, of, of course, uh, this wasn't a paid gig, but uh, I got to go see my buddy Freddie and his band uh, uh, Devotional Open for Sweet and Tenor Hooligans at the House of Blues in Anaheim. And that was a wild, awesome, fantastic show uh, for people who like uh, the Smiths and Morrissey, which is what Sweet and Tenor Hooligans are a tribute act towards. Uh, they just they did a phenomenal job. I've seen them several times. It, it was great. And it was a fun uh, to see my buddy Freddie uh, and his band open for him. And he's got Martini doing Martin Gore's uh, uh, role in the band. Uh, Martini did this spot on somebody rendition. Uh, if you guys have a chance, go see both those acts in live Sweet and Tenor Hooligans and Devotional. So, moving forward with the podcast here. What am I, what, you know, it's the new year, we got resolutions. So, I think what I'm trying to do here with the podcast is I'm going to have less script and more topics on which I can just riff, all right? Uh, in the past, I'm a writer. So I start writing something, and at first it's an outline, it's some ideas, but then I'm like, oh, no, it turns into sentences, and it's paragraphs, and it's like reworded before I know three hours just went by. Now, can any writers relate? Do you know what I'm talking about? So I was doing that, and then I realized, you know what, I'm putting too much effort into the podcast. Oh, you heard me. Yeah, I got a lot of art to give, okay? And I'm only going to give so much to the podcast, all right? I'm a working artist. I got shit to do, kids, all right? Netflix ain't paying me to do this. No, okay? When they are, and I can spend my entire day like, oh, I don't know, Conan O'Brien to do something, then, you know, maybe, maybe it's a different story. But for now, I'm going to try to take these monologues, and it's going to be just talking points, all right? Can you guys deal? I got guests booked through April, so I'm really happy about that. I got a bunch of other people who want to be on. We're going to figure it out. Got to get on Apple Music. I need to get on some other podcasts. Um, I know uh, Ursilia Pompilio, who is a previous podcast, I'm forgetting which one, 10, I want to say, 9. Uh, she's the nurse practitioner that uh, I had on as a guest. Uh, she wants me on her podcast, Um uh, uh, which is a nurses and hypochondriacs. And we're just trying to work out the scheduling on that. Uh, but I, I should get on some other folks' podcasts. So that's uh, that's my New Year's resolution. Um, yeah, Conan, apparently, uh, I started my podcast in August. He started his in November. So uh, I'm just saying, you're welcome, Conan. You need new ideas, and I delivered, Okay. It's ridiculous, though, listening to Conan's podcast because, like, the production values, <laughs> the staff he's got, it's just like, are you kidding me? So I think I think what I'm doing this year is I'm saying, Mark, just be you, okay? You know, my budget is what it is. My energy is what it is. My time, my resources, all that sort of thing. I can take a break. It's okay. I can do this 
the way I want to. I can refashion it so that I can keep it going. And and all of that's good. You know, you either like it or you don't. I'm just, I need a, a handful of people who like this and I'm good, you know? I mean, maybe you really desperately love Lyle Lovett and you want to go see him in concert. I'm not going to stop you, okay? You go do that because there's other people who want to listen to my podcast and I'm okay with that. It's a mostly free country, uh, except if you work for uh, the federal government, you're probably not going to get paid because we're... Um, we were made great again. Hey, you want $5 while supporting this podcast? Try Cash App. I did. So did my CHP birthday lieutenant fan. He linked a debit card and sent at least $5 via Cash App. In fact, he paid his deposit to hire Lieutenant Frank with Cash App. Then $5 was instantly added to his Cash App account. Look, you've heard about this on other podcasts. You know the ones. The ones with all that MMA and Fear Factor money. Look, a dude who kind of reminds you of that bully from high school, but says all the right things now, the dude driving a high-end sports car to do a set at the comedy store, that dude isn't worried about how to pay for his next podcast. I am. So use my code, WKX. R-V-B-X to support me and earn your $5 with Cash App. Available in your app store. Hey, you can hear Otier. I believe in you. Right now, we're here tearing for Vanka. We want to help Vanka. She still needs our help. Uh, I worked with her back in the mortgage industry days. She was an operations manager then. Now, She's homeless and struggling with a stroke she suffered two years ago that doctors finally diagnosed just this past November. To learn more, go to markromanempire.com, click Vanka. Her social security hearing is in March, but that doesn't help her survive until then. She's found a friend and fellow survivor in Will, also homeless. Together, they are Will and Grace. Vanka started a GoFundMe for Will, too. They both need each other and our help. For my Hollywood industry listeners, those of you listening right now who might know someone who knows or works with Eric McCormick or Deborah Messing, or hey, Ellen, please pass this story on. MarkRomanEmpire.com, click Vanka and be a hero to your. So, it's award season. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but uh, I was actually on an episode of Adam Ruins Everything, the awards shows episode. This was from about two years ago. So uh, look it up, check it out, because tis the season. Uh, You can see me be one of the producers who's nominated for an awardee award for the Rosa Parks story. Because I'm a white guy. Thanks, Adam. It is a new year of, uh, yeah, I'm back there with everyone else who had a resolution. But my resolution started like in October. That's when I got my my new gym membership. And I had this cold that I've been trying to get out of my system. And I finally got back. This week, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm, my goal is to go there three days a week. And I've done two of those three days already this week. Uh, when you hear this, when this drops on Monday, hopefully... I've done all three this week and then also my first one for next week. So hopefully that has happened while you're listening to this at the gym or in that line at the DMV or wherever you might be, you know, listening to this on that date that you kind of regret making, but somehow you're able to listen to a podcast and still have a conversation with your date. And do you teach classes? Because I really would like to learn how to do that. Anyway. Got a lot of cool things planned out for the new year. I don't need a new year to do it. Some of these are already planned before the new year started, but uh, it never hurts to every once in a while. Kind of reset, reevaluate, you know, uh, get some things fresh going. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you one thing that's not fresh scooters. What the fuck? Jesus Christ on a goddamn cracker. Um, Am I the only one that every time I see those scooters, I suddenly have these blood curdling rage that Bill Burr would just like, you know, be fearful of that just churns in my body like fucking spawn. I have these fantasies of that death race film. I want to be Keith Carradine in a fucking with a chainsaw massacre fucking hand. 
Can I mix more fucking metaphors? I don't care. Let's do it. I just, I just, I want to kill the scooters and the people who happen to be on them. I, I'm literally like, I fantasize about how they'll be, be hit in traffic. I'm like, please. And no, I won't help you. No, I don't know how to how to do CPR. I can't even spell CPR. I can't even spell 911. You deserve it. You are on a goddamn fucking scooter. I don't care that your leg is broken and your tibia is shoved through your spleen. I don't care. Hashtag scooters. All right. How do, do you want to listen to the podcast? Would you like to learn how to listen to the podcast? <clears throat> um, Mark, I, I, I already am listening. Yeah, I don't care. All right. I'm going to tell you how to listen to my podcast. Can I do that? Will you let me do that? Does that remind you of anyone we know? Yeah. Two more years, guys. Just two more years. Two more years. That's all, all, we, all we need to do. You can listen to my podcast on the Mixcloud, the Podbean, the Stitcher, the TuneIn, the YouTube. Uh, I am Mark Roman Empire on all those platforms. But on SoundCloud, it's Mark Roman Podcast. Don't ask why. It's just, it's how it is, okay? MarkRomanEmpire.com has all the links, plus rolling new grooviness. We keep making little tweaks and improvements here. My interview guest today is Anne Marie Evans. We've known each other from, wow, practically my first year down here in LA. That can't be 10 years ago, can it? It's gotta be like eight or nine. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Anyway, Anne Marie is one of my buddies, one of my dude buddies. I think you'll kind of gather from the interview. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's, it's cool. She's also a screenwriter a producer, a singer-songwriter, and more. She's one of the artist tribe. She's my friend. And she's a groovy person to kick off the podcast in the new year with. I can't wait to see what we talk about, how or how it goes, or what happens. Let's catch up with Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie Evans. I never call you Anne-Marie Evans, because we're friends. We're buddies. Yeah. I joke, it's like, you're like my dude buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I look like a dude. With my long, yeah, with I don't my know long, about that. With my long hair, I don't know about my that. My almond eyes. You got you, you're you're definitely you got a bunch of nails deep into your femininity, and you're like here. Yeah, like, I got that. On if, my if man you plate. need that on my man plate. But you know, I'm doing this for me. So deal. Yeah. Right. So how you doing? Happy New Year. Hey, Happy New Year to you. Where's that jingle? <sighs> I haven't heard a jingle yet. The jingle for this show. This show needs a jingle. Yeah. Mark Roman. Yeah. Well, we have something. It's like a little, you know, pastiche, if you will, oh, of yeah? some uh, Mark Roman, you know, voice samples, characters, little Mark Yoki tidbits here and there. So, you know, we have something. Yeah. We need something. It could be else. improved. We need more. Okay. We need music. If only I had a friend who was a singer songwriter and a mind for these things, who maybe oh. could think like a director or producer. Do you a know writer, anyone like that? A blogger. Anne Marie somebody. Evans. Mark Roman, I think I do. That'd be awesome. So what's new with you? Like how did you kick off your new year without the jingle? Um, let's see. I kicked off the new year. Uh I mean, I talk a lot about this in the monologue that I've yet to record. Okay. But uh my New Year uh, Eve evening was hosting, or emceeing, if you will, the uh, devotional New Wave New Year's Eve at the Viper Room. That's right. On the Sunset Strip. Yeah. And then as soon as that ended, I had to like, you know, wipe the champagne off my lips and then, you know, get my way home because I had to get to the Rose Bowl as Lieutenant Frank by like five six in the morning right crazy because that it's this huge tailgate for the you know what people call the rose bowl yeah which actually there's a lot of games at the rose bowl so like for myself my own notes i have to like specify it's the new year day rose I remember, bowl i remember so, though i remember lieutenant for busking frank. for lieutenant frank yeah he, you know he patrols the tailgaters protecting them from you know jimmy kimmel and democracy and whatnot so uh, after, after I got home from that early afternoon to New Year's Day, I just, I passed out. I was done. So, yeah. Yeah. That was my, how about you? How would you do? I sat on my couch 
like a rock star. Oh my God, I'm so jealous. Yeah, it was insanity. <laughs> so I was jealous. exhausted the next day. <laughs> I was exhausted. Yeah. You know, it's funny though, because I've literally gone to bed before the ball dropped on many occasions. So I don't know if New Year's is actually Yeah, I'm really not into the... Or not. It is, but it's not. But it I'm, is, but it's not. I'm not into the whole ball dropping thing, which in reality, since we're here on the West Coast, the ball dropped at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. Yeah. So, well, you know. Well, technically, midnight our time. But you're also right. Another conundrum. Yeah, right? but when it's 9 p.m. our time here on the West Coast, and it's midnight. And the ball's midnight, already dropping in New York. Mi- yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, or think of or like if you're even in China. Georgia, did you know China. this? I just, I found this out. New, new fun fact for the new year. In Georgia, apparently, they have the the peach drop, I think. So peach drop? They have a pe- I guess it's in Atlanta, I'm guessing. Peach and schnapps? They have a peach that drops. In a Bellini or something? That would be awesome, but like I don't champagne know. Champagne just I just, combustion. these are like rumors and whispers and, you know, undulations of possible, you know, sounds, news items. It sounds a little fishy. I think it sounds a little peachy, but okay. All right. I beg to differ. <laughs> but a bump. But a bump. Miss Ann Marie. Tip your waitress. You'll be here all night, guys. Now, you're from a southern state, aren't you? Yeah. Like Arizona? Tejas. Oh, Texas. That's yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. We got to start at the beginning. They call here. that a Paint. southern state, I guess. Yeah. I call and, it. and you love your mom and dad. You guys are like really close oh, growing up man. and stuff. The <laughs> perfect little family. The, I mean, it's magical right. looking back as a, you know. I think that's why we relate so well is because we both, you know, we had have the such best, love and adoration yeah, the best for our parental units. Oh my God. I mean, just you name I had it. the Dick and Marilyn show and you had... I had, what's a good show to call my life? Well, Love Jade, for instance, my show. I've we heard could, rumors we could about start this. with that title. Well, I guess we're just jumping right in. I was going to say that for a little later. I don't waste but, time. Okay, I, clearly. Time is not on my <laughs> side. You just go for the jugular of time. <laughs> <laughs> to the jugular. Let's talk about my show. Right. Well, I mean, which is a script that's floating around our fair town of Hollywood around. right now. It's yeah. looking for a home Fearless, where it can be uh, produced. Fearlessly right? floating around. Now, okay, well, explain that just because you are a producer. So why are you not producing this yourself? Let's ask that. I am uh, fully ready to produce this bad boy myself, but, but it's you know it's tricky. It's tricky. It's Hollywood. And you have to know the ins and outs and you have to know people and you have to have money and you have to have connections right. and you have to have referrals and you have to have people attached and you have to have <laughs> aneurysms and you have to have strokes <laughs> and you have to have peace and you have to have laughter and you have to have a lot of alcohol. Right. And then eventually you're a producer, you know, it. if you never give up and you do all of those things in that it. order. So are you you will produce that this yourself? Are you still searching and, and looking to see if maybe because there's pros and cons. I have a meeting on obviously. Wednesday with uh, really? with a producer writer. Uh, worked on Law and Order. Worked on Fairly Legal and worked on Saving Grace. Nice. I IMBD proed him. I have As dyslexia. You I might have said that all backwards, but you get the gif <laughs> and I do. Um, if not the Skippy, say some podcast prayers for me because ooh I don't know what to uh and by podcast we do, we prayers, do podcast good thoughts here well, the Mark I Roman the, Empire I said the you know. p word do oh, unless it. unless you have a really sexy god or goddess that does some like really hey, swell stuff prayers is a suggested you know suggestive word it doesn't it's have a to trigger be... word for me. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I Thank triggered, you, Dick and Marilyn I show. I triggered his <laughs> therapy session from Thursday. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Actually, I haven't been to my therapist. Maybe you need I to go. I had to kind of fire my therapist because it was, she was awesome. It wasn't her. It wasn't even me. It's this, you know, whether you have insurance or not type of thing. So right. apparently I had one thing and now apparently I now have a similar thing, but mm-hmm. now I got to like go back to the drawing board and like and get out. more things. Well, which, which healthcare providers, you know, does this plan allow me to have? Do you want me to That's pray for you about thing. it? Ooh, Ooh I said it again. Ouch. Yeah. You're just like, just going for inflicting it. Inflicting the pain. Yeah. Really. I'm bad. Like I will give you more and you would like it. People are going to think <laughs> I'm a nun. I'm really not. 
I'm literally dressed like Kurt Cobain right now. I'm just hearing the Depeche Mode's master and servants. Dun, can't dun, dun, you see dun, Kurt dun, Cobain dun, dun. in this outfit? Be honest with me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Point but being, I'm not a nun, but uh, I do. I got to be honest with you. Sell prayers. If, if Kurt Cobain was like right next to you and I had a choice. You'd interview me? Uh, I'd be like, I don't know who you are, dude, but there's like a Starbucks across the street. Right. I don't even care I, that I offended you. Could Just, you get me a lot? I'm going to talk to Anne Marie Evans because right. she strikes me as more interesting and she's already looking at me like the answer to all of my questions is no. Right. <laughs> I so ooze, I'm immediately intrigued. I'm I like, okay. Judgment, criticism, and prayers. Right. I'm actually, I hate grunge. You know why? Why? Uh, I endured the Dick and Marilyn show. I go to college. I thought you were going to say I endured the Dick, but then you said and Marilyn. Yeah. And then it got less interesting. Yeah. And oddly, it was more horrifying <laughs> <laughs> with the and. So, 89, I'm in college, barely. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the 80s ended. Okay. And now that I have my freedom to do what I want with my life, mm -hmm. instead of, you know, prayerfully petting Jesus in the proper manner, I don't know what they do. I, I, it's been a while. I forget. I think there is a petting zoo. Yeah. Where you can pet Jesus. But I know there's like rituals and there's blasphemy? a proper way to pet Jesus in the improper way. And, you know, if you do it the improper way, you're going to hell even worse than the people that thought petting Jesus for any reason was silly. So, I just braid his hair. There's this whole eschatology of people that are going to hell based on the fact that, you know, they they do pet Jesus, but, you know, they do it on Thursdays. And clearly we all know that that's, you know, only Satan would pet Jesus. What about patting? Thursday. Like just a pat, like, a, pat, like a pat See, on the back. And then there's another denomination okay. that are like, that that's cool. And that's not only okay. is that cool, like that's the only way to interface with the Jesus baby. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's other people that are like, well, you're a heretic and you should burn in hell because you don't know how to properly P pat, pat Pat, Pat Jesus. What about burping? Well, see, there's Jesus. an argument about in the original Greek, or was it the Aramaic? I don't know. What did that word actually mean? And there's a huge argument about is it is it pet or is it Pat? Yeah. And people have died over this question of because do you pet Jesus? Do you pat Jesus? Or do you burp Jesus? Now that's a that new one. I haven't heard of that question. one. Did I think they just can, dig up a new set of You can find that, and I think Dead Sea Scrolls in Corinthians. Uh huh. I might uh, be wrong. Okay. Don't. Is that in 3 Corinthians? Chapter 87? Yeah, page four. <laughs> page four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, we, we could do this forever. So I do, I got to cover some stuff. We got to get back to your, your script that's going around town and how you're producing it. Or if you're, like, you got the meeting Wednesday. Yeah. Because the advantage, because some people listen to this, you know, they just like me. Other people are like, hey, what's the whole Hollywood thing? There's this yeah. other artists and people and they're, they're, they'd they like to learn, how do you do Give me Hollywood? A to you know? step up onto my throne and I will explain how you do You know, do you're the only Hollywood. guest who's brought her own throne. throne. Do you like it? It's cute, huh? It's weird. I didn't even know we had a freight elevator in this building. <laughs> I, I mean, it, really... looks, it looks like a folding chair. But it is it was actually so much bigger in the freight elevator. Yeah. 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 Well, I was holding I just, it up high, like over my head. So the optics. Yeah. It's a yeah. it's an illusion. Um <laughs> so yeah, you know, it's just I wrote the show. It is about my perfect little life with my perfect family. Um hashtag lies. Can lots you introduce and lots us to, to this family? Because I've already I've got the Dick and Marilyn show. Like what what what's uh can can we use Real names, or is that not? We could go with Joan. Okay. Joan is my. No, that's a character. Character. Right? My mom in the show, okay. Joan. So you got Joan. Um, I actually did get Vera Farmiga to read for the part. That's right. Yeah. Her agent, Michael Catcher, um, assisted in that transfer and it did get to her. And then she did give it her review and it came back um, as a no. But I got to tell you, I've never celebrated over a no. So much. I in feel my like life. that's new news. The Have answer. I not told you the past. Yeah, I know I that, mean, she, that you'd submitted to her and she had interest. But I wanted her for my mom. I also yeah. wanted Uma Thurman, but it actually did yeah. land in her lap. So to me, that was triumphant. That is so awesome. Um, I think the role was a bit too similar to Norma Bates. If that tells you anything about my perfect mom. Nice. Um, <laughs> so that was a pass, and that's fine. I still celebrated. 
Because Vera well, process, Farmiga yeah, is absolutely. someone who now is familiar with me. And I think right? that's pretty awesome. So um, on to what came next. I just continued to write the show and we eventually got Mina Savari to give it her consideration and she did jump on board. So we've got some nice. exciting things happening. I've got this meeting. Um, we'll see what comes along. I My, my dream is to have... Um, if you're listening, Emmy, if you're listening, Emmy, Emmy Rossum, if you're listening, is to have Emmy, Emmy Rossum. Rossum play me. So let's just forward this podcast on over to her, if you don't mind. Sure. Immediately, yeah. as soon as you can. Um, I mean, we could use more listeners. I think I had a thousand listens. That's still for the first a thousand 14. more than none. That's just on SoundCloud. That's a thousand. You should be yeah, proud. Yeah, right? We all start somewhere. Exactly. You know? Speaking of starting somewhere, I noticed how we, we, we've had all this discussion of different possible actors to play, either your mom or you, and there's I feel like there's a someone missing from this equation. Well, here. I told you, you can be in this, Mark. Just give me a second. No, not me. <laughs> Although... I see what you're putting out there. No, I'm picking no. up what you're putting your down. Your dad! Who plays your dad in this? What dad? He's not even in it? I have a dad? Wow. <laughs> I didn't know. Copy that. More, okay. of my, more, right. more um, highlights of My Perfect Family. Right. Um, I should just name my show My Perfect Family. Or me. You know, there's a show called You. Is it's, there? It's a hit. It's on Netflix. I'm like, are they just not trying? <laughs> Do titles not matter? It's just called apparently, you. Should I just apparently call my show don't. me? I mean, right? it's a possibility that I could call it me. It's about me. You could. And it would be just fine. But I don't know. I like to be more colorful with titles and fathers. But you have no father in I have in not written script. a father okay. into the role. Okay. Into the role. I mean, into the show. Into a role. No, I mean, thanks for... Thanks for bringing that up because honestly, <laughs> I don't even think I've given it thought that I have a father. Which I have all these like explains a lot of of where you're coming from. I would I'm, think, and I think a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah, you know, so super... I don't mean to suggest that it needs a father, you know, character, but I just you know, it might. It being Jade, I it was, might need I was a father. Curious. Yeah. Um, See, mine were like so connected and apparently still at the hip, as far as I know, from from what I hear from the pigeons and whatnot. You and your you father? Uh, the Dick and Marilyn shows. Like, oh. they're so, it's like there's no divorces or like, you know, uh, latchkey kids or, you know, extra, you know, step parents or what have you. You know uh, what? They were like literally one unit, which by that I mean like my mother's like subsumed into my father. So. Right into his asshole cre crevice. Like, like if you crack, asked my mother like about me there. too, she would go, oh, well. Yeah. Me three, right? She would not feel authorized to have an opinion on that subject. Me no inglés? Because, uh, well, no, because, you know, her world is uh, her husband. Full stop. I don't know if I and then, knew and then, that you And then her from... kids, allegedly, but, you know. I don't know if I knew that you came from a solid parent household. For some reason, I thought there was more... And they were very proud of dysfunction. it. Dysfunction. Like, they really... It was important to them that I understand and appreciate that not everyone had that. And that's, like, a really special thing. And Praise you know, Jesus. I'm just thinking, I never got to see Star Wars until I was in college, so... <laughs> wow. <laughs> that made Ollie turn his head, like, what? And here I am. Yeah. I've never seen Star Wars. What? Yeah. You and haven't either, Ollie? He hates it. Honestly, hates it. Okay. He can't do it. Can't do Star Wars. Okay. There you go. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to right. like this now. My son likes anime. No, 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 no. Not anime. Animation. Like, incredible. Oh, so not just Japanese, but... Okay. Okay. Well, you would watch it. Trying it suggests it's like some sort of kinky interactive thing, which I'm not going to judge, Ollie. If you want to do that, that's, you know, I mean, you are the guy who turned me on to uh, Peaky Blinders. So I'm eternally grateful to you for that. Yeah. 
Oh, no. Of course, he puts me on the spot right here on the podcast. What? Okay. And then I'll see another show. and I'll be... I haven't seen it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I did. I did. I did. I did. I'm sorry. Take that back. No, no. It's the British new one. It's badass. Yeah. It's on Netflix. You're plugging it? Are they paying you? No. No. I just, it's so good. They should. They should. And you know, there's so many people that should. All right. So many people that should. Apple. Apple pay you should to plug, plug me because I have an iPhone, you know? So. Right. Well, get to it. All right. So your what dad kind of empire is, this? is not, it's a Mark Roman empire. Right. Also tell that to Tell that to Apple. Get on it. I'm serious. Yeah, I know. I need, I need to get this podcast on it's Apple Music so people can actually listen to it. But yeah. they're so, you know, all the other platforms seem to be a lot easier. I don't know why. I think it has something to do with like the the, the pixelation size of the the cover image. I don't know. I just okay. That see, sounds very fixable. Sounds weird. Do not Maybe, let that stop you, perhaps. Mark Roman Empire. I know. What kind of empire stopped at pixels? The kind of empire that has basically one person running it with a, I mean, a hired sound engineer on the day. Yeah, every but week. you have an <laughs> iPhone. You got the eight plus. Yeah. It's gonna take high definition photos. You're good. Let's get this Apple thing up and running. Okay. Well, it's been in use. It's just, you know, these other little tidbits. I just think that you need to get on this Apple thing so that they start paying you what you Maybe I should start using Siri. Sherry? Surly? Hey, Surly? How about Surly? I think you need... <laughs> surly. It should be Surly. A jingle to start off this podcast. <laughs> hey, Surly. <laughs> hey, Surly. Yes, I am Surly. <laughs> Yes, you are. <laughs> I think Sherry. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Sherry. Let's ask the listeners if we're going to do uh, podcast jingle. Hey, maybe this will clever. trigger my first hey, fan mail, which is a uh, Roman pod mail at gmail.com. You could answer that question. I'm emailing you right now. Yeah, I can see you pantomiming. They can hear it. me hitting my screen, right? Yeah. Totally I, I love those sound effects. An email. This feels like a very genuine, legitimate <laughs> hey, Siri. real world experience. There you go. Yeah, I got to do a podcast right now, Siri, but I really appreciate you just kind of jumping in there. Guess who's got an and, Apple uh, you know. sponsor? Yeah. I'm looking at him. Okay. He's got a beard. All right. Handsome I Bella. Do. Thanos happened. I just plugged you, buddy. You know. You're welcome. I feel like I need a cigarette <laughs> now. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else we need to know about your childhood? Because I want to scoot on to some other stuff. Do you have seven years? I don't. Okay. I don't. Well, it's going to take some time. I'm going to have to watch your show. So we got to find a home for your show. My childhood. Just yes. one question and I'll answer it. What What piques your interest about my childhood? Uh, I'm trying to find out how you pay came. Oh, I pay this. came? Yeah. it's Pay came. There's this Chinese place where I get some <laughs> pay and came. It's it's off menu because hey, I'm come. that Hollywood. Yeah, it sounds horrible. <laughs> it comes with a massage. Yeah, um, it's uh, actually pretty tasty. How I became remarkably less MSG than you'd expect. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, I pay came as a child into women with lots and lots and lots of self inflicted faith. Stemming from self-inflicted strength. Self-inflicted faith. Notice I'm not saying prayers. Okay. I just had it in me to survive. And I really think that being a creative person and leaning toward art as an outlet, drawing, writing, poetry, songs, playing my piano, playing my guitar. You do more than lean towards it. You literally create it. I create art. Yeah, you do. I do. I mean, I started recording music in studios like this one when I was 14. What? And it was my outlet because I had such dysfunction. Again, who's my daddy? I mean, I know who he is. Right. But he's been demoted to... He's not in the script. <laughs> sperm donor. Does a sperm donor get to be a character in my show? Maybe. Right. We'll give it to Mark Ruffalo to. I, I to feel give like that that's like in season three. Maybe there's a there's like, there's a, like a, a mention. Firmed. But you don't actually have to cast someone because he's just you know it's he's referenced in a conversation between. <laughs> right. That's a that's a sense of guy. I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't know. And then and, it's not until season five we actually go. Are we actually going to show him? 
I don't know, should we? And there's like a whole like meeting and, yeah. you know. I think it should be Mark Ruffalo though. I really do. He's yeah. good at playing sperm donors. Okay. I don't know if you've seen The Kids Are All Right. I have not, but I love Mark Ruffalo. And, and uh, before, you know, he was an Avenger even. Yeah. He, yeah, he's just. He's incredible. He's spectacular. One of the greatest of all time. Yeah. Mark Ruffalo. Really? Up there Seriously. with. Up there with Brando, right? You've got Marlon Brando, and then you've got Mark Ruffalo. Okay. (laughs) I mean, I I really like Mark Ruffalo a lot. (laughs) I think most could agree. But I'll be honest, (laughs) on the upside for Mark (laughs) Ruffalo, there's a lot of baggage with Brando that I just don't see happening with Ruffalo. And I I, think that he's, uh, we are all grateful to him for that. Mark my words. (laughs) He's our next godfather. It's difficult being a brilliant artist. So it's a heavy, it is. Uh, Comes with a lot of, um, I don't know. I mean, definitely not a two-parent home. I think being a brilliant artist comes with a lot of dysfunction and a lot of It almost trauma. seems like, you know, artistic brilliance requires yeah. that. Unfortunately, a I wish that wasn't up the life. case. But yeah. Are you going to bleep that? I want to be bleeped. Bleeped? We don't bleep here. We do not fucking bleep here. We are marked explicit. Can you just bleep this for me? Just me. Just like a loud, obnoxious bleep. Just to jar the ears of all your okay, listeners. Okay, I'll talk to someone at the network and I'll I see if we be can bleeped. do it in post. I've never been bleeped. All right. Okay. Back to my childhood. All right. Which if it was bleeped, you're welcome, My audience, childhood if you was the bleeped. Bleep. Yes. The entire <laughs> thing has been bleeped. <laughs> Well, we, so was, we had to cut <laughs> cut for time, okay? We had to cut for time. It's a classic Hollywood problem, Just right? Just wait for Love, Jade. It, I'm thinking <sighs> is going to be on Netflix or Hulu or whatever the fuck. I'm expecting that to be bleeped. Streaming network. You know, maybe you should... There's the a lot of new uh, streaming platforms. Uh, this year's but Disney's supposed to come out YouTube. with one. YouTube. Um, YouTube TV. Facebook just started one. Oh my God. My dream is for my show to be picked up by Facebook stream. <laughs> right. That is really what I want. Please, God. I don't know who's watching Hashtag stuff on, prayers. on Facebook, but yeah. Um, oh Can we call God. this episode Hashtag Prayers? I think that's funny. Well, that's uh, broaches an interesting question, which I'm open to like some new things for the podcast, but the show titles which is kind of honestly following the Mark uh, Marin method. That's not an exercise Is that a style routine. of acting? <laughs> it sounds like a, a The Mark of, Marin method. It sounds like an alternative uh, health option. Like transcendental <laughs> meditation, like on acid. Today, we're going to introduce you to the basic principles of the Mark Marin method. Yeah, right. It involves a lot of anger, self-hatred. And that's when you say... But it takes you to a happy Zen place somehow. Right. And that's when you say, hey, Sherry, show me the Mark Marin Method YouTube series. <laughs> right? I think we're onto something with, hey, Sherry. I, I, think I want to be Sherry. You should have a what the fuck. Um, bleep it. It's got to be bleeped. What the fuck. Um, uh, okay. So a what the bleep. bleep. And then Mark Marin can't whine. Hey, he, Sherry. You know. So what the bleep. The, the streaming network. So WT Bleep and Bleep like in big cartoon characters with an exclamation point. WT Bleep. That, yeah. Also... Did you see my new show? It's on the WT Bleep. Can I just tell the listeners that we are on the drum level and I'm listening to drums while we do this. And okay, it's genius We are at the me. Musicians Institute <laughs> and, and it's like ghosts are, in the machine. All we're right, on so the drum level. So there are drums th- are everywhere. Things you can hear, feel, see. You gotta admit that's sense. funny. It is very. You're doing a podcast right? on the drum level <laughs> of the Music Institute where there is banging <laughs> all the way down the and hallway. Yet nobody can hear it on the podcast. Why? Because St. Oliver over here, he's my sound got, engineer, is yeah. that. What he, well, he's cutting good. the drums out when we stop talking. But actually, literally, he takes he a might pair of the scissors, drums. heavy, <laughs> rusty <laughs> shears, and he literally physically cuts them out. I don't know how he does it. He went to school for it. That's I think all I know. I just, I, for just like a solid three seconds, Mr. Engineer over there should boost the drums up 
over us. Just so your listeners. No. No? No. 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 That's how that's how good this is. All right. See, Ain't I just gonna happen. That was my backdoor sell on how brilliant your sound engineer is. And I was also a backdoor sell on him. why people should it should get on my calendar to be on this podcast uh, starting in May because we're already booked through. Even though I still got folks from last month during the holiday hiatus, I got to reschedule. So, yeah. You can be here. The only people that hear the drums are, are the you. guests. Yeah. I like it. It adds flair. Like this does. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. And that's the other thing I did during that the holiday forced. hiatus. That was totally... Was that real? Was that a no, real No, it's real. I, it, I, it's cold and it's like, the the lingering after effects you got like, like phlegm in your throat it just mm -hmm. it just gets it gets thinner and less but there's still just like a little meaty chunk that just hangs out and I just want to make know. sure because it looked rehearsed no it, well it was kind of okay be honest I knew it I mean I had to cough but it was like a performed cough when you and did it was it. it was an improvised choreography I know fake coughs when I hear them. <laughs> did, did you go to school for that? <laughs> I did. I minored in fake cough. Is that what you did in Colorado? Yeah. Majored in in uh. What, what happened in what Colorado? Did Why'd you go off to Colorado? What did I go off? Wait, wait. What's, what's the question? Why? Why did you go off? Off to Colorado. I went off to Colorado. Um, geez, why? I've asked myself the same question. <laughs> um, well, that girlfriend. Um, and that she's urge. pretty cute, aren't they all? I yeah. get told that I only date girls that look like me, which I think is. Funny. Do you? Because I met your current girlfriend. Yeah, I'd say Not you guys so are in much. the same universe. Trying something but, different. Yeah, I mean, she seems nice. Yeah, adorable. like really nice. Adorable. Like, you guys seem like you, you know, Sweet. are digging each other and having Beautiful. fun. And, yeah, amazing. I think she was, she's a, before she met me, she was a little weirded out because she's like, who's this Mark and what are you guys doing? Oh, I can't believe we went here. Aspen, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> why did I go to Colorado? This is why I'm single. Right. Because you're you talking, know? yeah, I mean. So I don't have to have those awkward conversations. About, like, okay, about her so. over your podcast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I can't wait till you do that. Only a thousand people have heard this and that's that's like plays on sound and those are so all girlfriends highly doubt it <laughs> <laughs> um highly doubt it do you want to tell your listeners about um about your greek no. olive come on about my what your greek olive my greek olive come on yeah okay i'm just i'm having a flashback to the last time olive greek and it was a few days ago and I literally got, oh, I know where it was. So when I was going to go see uh, Sweet and Tender Hooligans and Devotional at uh, House of Blues in Anaheim. And I got dinner and... You had an olive? I literally, I don't remember why. I think because I was waiting for my entree. I, I asked for some olives because I needed something in my gut. This is such a good story. Where does it go? I'm on the edge of my seat. Clearly. I'm How does it end? you right now. <laughs> <laughs> olives. He asked for olives. I oh asked for olives God. and they were green. What's the B story? And they were um, slightly meatier than I was expecting. Oh. Because you kind of, you see the green olives and you're kind of like, all right, they're, and they probably were out of right. this big, huge tub procured at like a Smart and Final or a Costco or some, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. But it just, it had, Almost this, like I, I walked by a bottle of Kalamata olives vibe and I was digging it. Yeah, wow. That's good. Wow. Sorry. No, this back to, no, back I mean, to your story. Just, you, just, wow. you said green olive and that kind of. Well, that's the story I wanted to hear. And I'm just glad that you told it. I'm glad that you finally. See, good, that was a good trick. Finally See, not all up. triggers are bad. Some triggers are good. They, do they, <laughs> what they do is. Why are they, we afraid they of triggers? openings for brilliant storytelling. Which is basically what you just did. Yes. I feel like I'm having a Sarah Silverman moment. 
I, like I need to start like of, talking right? like her now. I just listened to Sarah Silverman because uh, Jeff Goldblum and the Mildred Snitzer Orchestra, uh, uh-huh. which if you haven't seen Live Kids uh, at the Rockwell, I've spoken about this before on the podcast, but phenomenal, phenomenal, just a, a, a wonderful experience. If yeah. you're if you're going to be in LA, look up uh, the Rockwell Table and Lounge, Stage and Lounge. I don't know something like that. The Rockwell, Jeff Goldblum, you'll find it. Uh, you want to go see him. It's fantastic. But he has a new album that he just dropped. And Sarah Silverman does a duet. Oh, I love it. With Jeff Goldblum. I just it's really awesome. like how she talks, you know? Right? Yeah. There's a wide range, though, too, of what she could do. And I love her jokes. You should have her on the show. I would, there, oh, there's a laundry list of people I would I'll love to have. I'll sit in her lap if you have her on the show. Um, Is that a deal? Does that sound good? I'll just, you know, if if everyone can make that happen I, and is good with I'm it. I'm going to raise a Kickstarter. Okay. Help me sit <laughs> on Sarah Silverman's lap for a podcast with the Mark Roman Empire. Sitting on Sarah Silverman. I feel like And that's... then I'll hashtag Apple iTunes. How's that sound? There we go. Yeah. I think it's Apple Music now. Apple it used Music. to be iTunes. No, it's still know. iTunes. I think they rebranded. Oh, you know what? I think you're right. Ago. Here yeah. we are plugging Apple again. Right. You know what I forgot to do? And I always do this with everyone, but I'm so comfortable with you because yeah. we're buds. Which is why you, I, what? Why aren't you wearing any clothes? You're that comfortable. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. No, there's He's a good not, reason. I'm okay. glad you brought this up because okay. in France, yeah. you know, we party, there's a clothing, uh, totally not necessary restaurant okay. that is about to go out of business. Okay. So this is my way of showing solidarity uh-huh. across the pond. And celebrating. With with people who like to prepare food and and while fully clothed and serve it to patrons who are not. Okay. I I figured you were just really comfortable with me. I had no idea this had to do with a restaurant and going I could out be of business some, in France. Some some sushi in Paris or some Do they eat sushi in Paris? Or some some, you know They do. Okay, I got a confirmation. Some fried oysters. Yes. And, 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 you know, look up at some, you know, s- sweaty, overweight, you know, naked dude. Yeah. You know, with his mom and eating spaghetti. Isn't that a, a real, you know, you actually, that actually happened though, right? Yeah. No, that's just a news story. Yeah. I yeah. Almost, I think I like your olive story better though. Okay. Well, you know, but well, you, you did, you did pre-warn there would be judging. If you get podcast. chilly, feel free to put your clothes back on. <laughs> I want you to be comfortable. It is your show. You know, I just I've started working out again, and I just you know I'm I'm proud of the body <laughs> that I could one day possibly have. Yeah, with a lot of help. Okay, so, there you go. It, that you know, I'm aspiring. Okay. Okay. This is can I can I be me? Yeah. In Hollywood, they just the like, idealized me of someday. They just call it cocaine. That's really <laughs> all. All you need to lose weight out here. Oh my god. We, you know as what? He, as he scratches his has nostrils, it, has it? Do you do you remember when we met? Do you remember how we met? I do. First? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's hear your story. Are they different stories? Um, I they don't could know. be. I'm about to find out. Uh, I think I met you. Um, when? What was it? Oh, it was a show. It was Wonder Woman. Yes. We had to do a three night, overnight. Stay. I, now, I now, mean, it be, felt like a stay. Now, in, at this I point, s- slept under a table at some point <laughs> because I can't do 172 but, but hold, hours. Hold, hold, hold the phone for a quick second, Anne Marie. Mm-hmm. When we say Wonder Woman, people are me- immediately thinking of you know Patty Jenkins directed the feature film Gal Gadot starred, and that's not the Wonder Woman we're talking about. We're talking about the TV show that never aired. That's right. That was written by. Davey Kelly. Oh, you mean the guy who wrote Ally McBeal in The Practice? Yeah, that guy. Yeah. That, and I think that loser. Wonder Woman was uh, Adrian Paulowicki. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Adrian, if I'm misspelling your last name. I apologize. I don't know if I even saw her. I was I was busy sleeping. I mean, that background job is well, she, pretty atrocious when it wants to be. We were literally doing it Three in the morning. On Hollywood Boulevard in in front of the Dolby Theater. And I watched as the actor, Adrian Polowicki, Adrian, as she's going up on the harness, up the steps, Mm -hmm. 
as if, you know, it takes a Wonder Woman to, to go host the Academy Awards. Oh, that's 10 right. years ago or Would eight that years have been ago. How long ago? Pilot? Yeah, maybe. She like the harness snapped or something. She like literally like landed on her ankle and I think broke her ankle or something like that. And then it was like, oh. you know, yeah, suddenly, I was sleeping under a table and holding it. They didn't even sure. call a martini shot. They're like, dip wrapped. <laughs> right. And that was like a thing 4 a.m. And then I slept for a week. We had like, what, a 5 p.m. I think call time. So still is like a, a 12 hour day. 12 hours for three days in a row. Remember that? Oh, it was. It was, it was like day. Thursday, okay. Friday, Saturday. That's crazy. Sunday, Monday. I think they're still rolling. They might be. <laughs> I mean, it hasn't aired yet, so you do the math. But right? yes, that's when I met you. <laughs> you had your Hugh Grant hair and all your... My Hugh Grant hair? What and all your mean? youth and vitality and your smiles. Oh, I had and slightly your, and your longer jokes. short hair. You were a fun guy. Was I? You were. I'm not sure what happened, but you do have your, you do have that olive story. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll always have the olive story, the green. Olive Why do I feel like uh, I feel like I'm? What, what's her face on uh, Robin on on Stern? You know, before, <laughs> are you like writing a part for you in my podcast on an ongoing recurring you might, basis? You might need a little. Right, I never do this, but it's a new year, and you're my buddy. So, and I've never really shared this on the podcast itself. So I kind of want to get a sense for people of what it's like, but I always have uh, gifts for the uh, guest. Yeah. But I usually always do that after we've recorded the podcast. Oh, so shit. Okay. Here we are. First uh, gift is a citation from none other than Lieutenant Frank. Oh. Who you encountered being a cheesehead that you are at that Packers game, Finally Packers got my Rams game. Present. Finally. Uh, yeah, you. he apparently cited you for being Anne Marie Evans and Wonder Woman. And yeah. also, happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, Still! Thank you. Because, you know, there's green. I you actually like, are wearing green. I am wearing green. But, you know, you're Packers. Well, I'm, so. I'm dressed like Kurt Cobain. And, and why think, Packers? Because you're from Texas. I like, you were in Colorado. And, you, you know, you're here in L.A. Because I'm so. pretty sure Kurt Cobain was a Packer fan. Can we just leave it at that? Fine. Okay. So I like that you've circled Wonder Woman as me. Right. Thank you. Because you kind of embody is. Wonder Woman. And we met on Wonder Woman, the TV show that never aired. And right. so. Yeah. And I probably we were both could working play her on if they were going to cast for another. In wardrobe or something. If they ever cast for another pilot that doesn't go to season. I'm right? down. Right. I will do that pilot. I just want to get a SAG after voucher because I think it was non-union back then. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you weren't as cool as you are now. Oh, My other I gift. don't know. And thank now, you so, no, can I just say thank you for the citation? Yeah. I don't. Well, you got to thank Lieutenant Frank. So next time you see him, I'll pass it on to him. Though, Do you want? Can he? That's just, from Lieutenant Frank. Can he be on the show for like one second? For just like, can he just? Say, can, hey, Lieutenant Frank, can you just say a word? Spreading the news like mayonnaise on toast and stuff. Thank you. There. Thank All you right. so much. You're welcome. All right, go back to work. All right, now let's go back. This is actually a Mark Roman gift. Uh, it's my poem. I wrote a poem. I can write too. Aww. Son of Elmer Gantry's bitch. Oh. And it's uh, it's autographed by wow. Mark Roman. That's, yeah. Wow. wow. It's a two-pager. Shit. Right? And we got a little uh, little discount card here for uh, the ultimate shoe bag. One of my previous guests, my buddy, uh, Ross Michael Johnson. I want to say that's episode two. Uh, he has a company called, with his mom, The Ultimate Shoe Bag. I, I need a shoe Don bag. Designs. I was just thinking that on the way here, that right? I need a shoe bag. But you said, well, he, he made one just for you. And you can save money with that, that card there. So I call that Parallel Lives. Is that? I think I need a shoe bag. You hand me a discount card for shoe bags. You're welcome. Yeah. And then this is just a little, hey, I have a podcast, in case you didn't know. <laughs> I, just, I, I wish people could see it, you know? Right? It's a visual. You should do a visual podcast. A visual podcast. We'll move up to video eventually. Right? I might. That's I might. when I get to be Last Robin. but not least, and this is from uh, Lieutenant Frank, and I'll let you describe to the folks uh, listening. So much paperwork. Podcast right now. I feel like I've pulled somebody <laughs> over. Pun intended. Uh-oh. I love this. What did I give you? I'm going to put from this Lieutenant in a frame Frank. and put it on my wall in my bedroom. Well, describe it to the folks. Well, you're fully nude, which I find <laughs> a little vile. But you're my friend. And you're wearing pom-pom leg warmers. Um, pride pom-pom leg warmers, which hey, I that's appreciate. not me. That's Lieutenant Frank. All right. I'm sorry. This okay. is his alter ego in short shorts. 
and he's holding a banana in reference to, I'm guessing, his penis, possibly. No, I'm being because logical. a water pistol would be a misdemeanor, and then the terroristers win. Everyone knows that. All right. Well, I was just going off, you know, gut instinct. Really? Clearly, I was wrong. It's a water pistol. Um, and yeah, you look, you look great. You look great. You're spread an eagle. You got the muscles. You got on the tie. You got on the cowboy hat. You got on the Read the inscription. You look like you're going to pee on this fire hydrant. Oh, my God. And it says, Anne-Marie, I'm ready for my cameo. Lieutenant Frank. Again, fully nude. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Hashtag me too. Okay. All right. Right. Yeah, him too. Um, yeah. Thank you for my gifts. I'm the one suffering here. I need a manila. Yeah, do you like Do you have that? like a file folder I can put? I'm just kidding. Um, I probably <laughs> should create, a, no, seriously, I should create a Mark Roman Empire uh, like manila gift folder? bag. Manila folder. Yeah. yeah. Until I actually have gift bags, which would be awesome. Why is it called manila and not vanilla? Why is it not called uh, vanilla? I'm referring to the folders. Why can't it be a vanilla folder? Why does it have to be? Is it even How vanilla? About a man, uh, manila? Uh, Millie vanilla uh, folder. Oh, well, yeah. We could... What it is, is it's kind of, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shitty knockoff. Of a manila folder? Yeah. It is manila folder, right? Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because the Philippines are involved, I think. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Per, yeah. All right. I think they're invented in the Philippines. Five minutes, or is it five seconds? It's five uh, nano quarks, which is a very five small kilos, small increment. <laughs> As he goes for his nose again. Of time. <laughs> yes. Is that my towel? <laughs> Can I no longer play poker? Do you know any jokes? Are we sticking to the bullet points? Just. I'm whatever. just making sure we're not missing anything. There's a whole bunch more we can talk about. I mean. It's where do we begin? Where do we end? It's just. You want to reshape my podcast is how all of this I started I just think tonight. it should start with, hel- <laughs> hey, Sherry. Hey, Mark, Sherry. Mark Roman Empire needs a. You've got a podcast. Needs a jingle. And or, I want to be, I want to be the empire behind the jingle. Are you serious? Yeah. You need a jingle. I Every do great need a podcast jingle. No, I, starts that, with a song. Because you're a singer-songwriter, Anne-Marie Evans. Yeah. I've watched you busk on this, a Santa Monica promenade, your own music that you wrote, playing your guitar was and whatnot. Was busking? That's busking, yeah. You're I a busker. I was just moping is what I was doing. You'll be... With my $4 tip for a five-hour <laughs> session. I was moping. Busking? Mm. You mean we're just out there having fun? I was, yeah. It was <laughs> just my free spare time to just contribute and give back. Right. Now that's... That's fun. I recommend everybody right. sing a song on the promenade in Santa Monica at least once <laughs> in their lifetime. So you're going to write me a jingle? I might. It would be like, uh, it could even be instrumental, but I'd love. I might your, play my uh, guitar. I might, yeah. play, I might play my guitar. That's my, my Holly Hunter voice. I might play my guitar for you. Ha! <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll sing hey, it Bring like. me back those babies, ha! <laughs> I love him! <laughs> you gotta love Holly Hunter. Oh. We should do a, you should do an episode solely on Holly Hunter. I would love to have Hunter. Holly Hunter on, Let's, on the podcast. Sarah Silverman, yeah. I'm thinking next week, Holly Hunter. That's a threesome I can get February. behind. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, it's a new year. Let's, new year, new year. Strategize. I feel like there's a lot of new fresh stuff that's coming into and I'm happy the podcast to so. sit on Holly Hunter's lap as well. Uh, if I can make it happen, I'd be happy to supervise because someone the deal. with the union needs to. So yeah, yeah, so with yeah, in a tasteful way though, of course. I don't think she would mind. I don't think she'd mind either. No, I'm and happy to do I, it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'll hold the mic for her. Sarah would improvise something, and Sarah can rub my shoulders. N- none of us would would be upset. Yeah, it'd be yeah. a three woman act. Copy that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been the blood. That's where we should have ended the podcast. That was that was perfect. Is it over? No, it's not over. I'm just saying that was a great with Holly you know, Hunter. It'd be a great way to end any podcast with Holly Hunter. Well, to be fair, it was a Holly Hunter reference. It wasn't like, you know, Holly, according to Hoyle herself in the flesh, Holly Hunter. It was, you know, a Holly Hunter 
reference, which was awesome. I'm actually referring to Holly Hunter. I'll grant you that. Go big or go home, right? Is that who is who who's been behind me here this whole? That's this actually whole time? not Holly Hunter. That's, that's your not, jacket. That's that is not, your sports coat. My sport. Yeah, it's more of a. <laughs> It's more of a sportsy casual. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're done being nude, feel free to put that bad boy back on. Yeah. This this <laughs> fascination of yours with my nudity that <laughs> may or may not in all actuality. Hey. You know, we live in a, in a day and time It's where enticing like, and people are perverts. I think it will draw in a bigger audience. Yeah, it might also saying. draw in Glory Allred, all right? <laughs> and maybe Holly Hunter. Jesus. His most controversial podcast so far. Seriously. Well, this is what gets you up on the charts. Controversy. Is it? Humor. Possibly fake news and nudity. I I'm mean, I, I asked uh, Lee Cock, who's in His last name's The Cock? Mule uh, with Clint Eastwood. <laughs> He's it laughing, is. just so you know. It is, but if Lee was right here right now, you probably wouldn't say that to his face because he's a pretty hardened looking dude. He's also... What's his name? Lee. What's Lee Cock. Cock. How do you spell that? C O C. No K. No K. He what doesn't. I, he doesn't need it. He doesn't need the K. He doesn't and need the it. cock. Anyway, he's in. I'm talking about cock a lot. That's he's inappropriate. He's in the mule. With Clint Eastwood. If you see the trailer, he's the guy that uh, approaches Clint Eastwood's truck as it pulls into the garage. He, uh, Lee's character's got an AK-47. He looks all hard. He looks like he's about to eat Clint Eastwood for breakfast. He came on the show. But he was, yeah, he was uh, episode number six. And uh, he's buddies with... Um, Holly Hunter? Uh, James Franco. Oh. Slightly different. I have a friend who's friends with him. I think and everybody might be friends with So I asked him about, Franco. you know, what people are talking about. And, you know, he answered. And for those of you who want more, go to episode six of the podcast. But uh, it, was, it was a little controversial. I'm going to episode six as soon okay. as this podcast is over. All right. I'm intrigued. I want to know more. I know. And... This is why I brought you onto the podcast in this new 2019 year. Anne Marie Evans. Episode six, guys. As Mark Marin would do, do he would like be kind of like, I'm sweaty like he would be in, in uh even now. And I'd be like, ah, so uh so so do, do, do we do it? Do, do we cover it? Do, do, Sound like Beetlejuice a little bit. Yeah, they, they, uh, you know, it's just not really not uh, I think you should uh, do an entire episode in your Beetlejuice voice, to be honest. Yeah, it's not really what I do, okay? I'm not really, you know, oh, now I'm laughing. or, you know, I got other shit to do. You know what I mean? It's there you go. Like, there you go. Yeah, it's, I don't, you know, Babs, I just, I don't think it's going to happen, all <laughs> right? It's a good try, all right, you know? Genius. But hey, if you're not doing something afterwards, you know, if you want to, hey, you know, fool around a little bit, whatever. There you, you go. Know. Yeah, hey, I'm totally down for that. Right? Let's I'm, get Holly Hunter I'm in a classy this. guy, all right? Let's do it. Yeah, I'll bring Holly. Yeah, bring Holly. Bring I'll as bring many Sarah. girls as you want, hey. I got I mean, a lot of, you know. We got that was Beetle. Beetlejuice, by the way. Gloria Allred. I don't so. think you need to even tell anybody that was Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, they can send the subpoenas <laughs> to Beetlejuice, all right? It makes sense. All right. Well, that was fun. Right? Yeah. You going to get dressed now? And Marie Evans. All right. Talk to you soon. See ya. So... I thought I was interviewing my good friend, the very talented Anne Marie Evans, but apparently I was conducting an audition for Anne Marie to be my Robin Quivers while naked. Yeah, I, I wasn't naked. All right. And again, Gloria Allred or any other kind of all color of, of your choice, you know, send the uh, subpoenas to Beetlejuice. I don't know how you find Beetlejuice or how you serve him. That's not what I do. Show notes are at markromanempire.com. Did you guys like Anne Marie? I like Anne Marie a lot. I, don't know, I think she made a pretty compelling case uh, to be here on the podcast. Uh, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll discuss. We'll figure out. But uh, I would love to have a uh, a little a little song, a little intro song from Miss Anne Marie. That would be pretty awesome, Ms. We'll have to do another podcast to clear that one up. Anyway, markromanempire.com. You get the links, show notes. Hey, I'm still working on the show notes, guys. I'm back from the hiatus. You know, I'm, I need to get this podcast on, on Apple Music, okay? So priorities, kids, all right? But I do have a lot of links already embedded 
uh, you know, in the post uh, on SoundCloud there and also on the WordPress on the website. So check it out. Hey, you can write the show at romanpotmail at gmail.com. Maybe you could be the first one to do so. We certainly gave you a lot of options of things you could write in about and express your opinion. Hey, thanks to all our listeners across the globe. I see you, Houston, South St. Paul. That's in Minnesota. And Coalinga, California. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate you listening. Don't forget, Venka and Will, a.k.a. Will and Grace, still need our help. Be a hero to your. Go to markromanempire.com, click Venka. Now, you can listen to the podcast on a variety of platforms. We got your Mixcloud, the Podbean, the SoundCloud, the Stitcher, the TuneIn, and, of course, for you millennials, you're welcome, YouTube. Now, we do have an Apple Music hack. So check that out until we actually get in the store, which apparently Anne Marie's going to do for me. Uh, MarkRomanEmpire.com. Click listen. Are you a citizen of my podcast? If not, you missed out on previous contests. Join my mailing list. The Mark Roman Empire Census. Sometimes we have special deals and perks for podcast citizens. What kind? Hey, whatever they may be, they are only available to podcast citizens. To become a podcast citizen, join the census. Go to markromanempire.com, click census. Twitter still at the Mark Roman. Instagram still at Vegas90210 for Lieutenant Frank and Cap. If we got a new Instagram now, guys, that happened. I got to change my copy. Yeah, sometimes I have copy. We're trying to do a little more improv this year. We're working on it. But Mark Roman Empire is now on Instagram. So check that out. Uh, that is brand new as of, I think, last month. Email me at the podcast at romanpodmail at gmail.com if I haven't already mentioned that. Until next week, how can you hero tier? For Venka, a.k.a. Will and Grace. Remember Clownolin and Prince St. Paul. I am the Mark Roman. <laughs>